Okay, here we are. Two weeks I haven't been here because of, of the great uh, Arctic um, uh, vorte the vortex, they call it? Po polar nor uh, the, uh, vortex. Polar, polar vortex. Vortex. Yes. Yeah, we had a, a uh, uh, we had very dangerously cold weather and a snowstorm, which ice I storm. which I ice storm which I videoed and put on YouTube, Ooh, <laughs> and because um, um, I had nothing better to do, I was stuck in a house, so I had to take a video, right? Um, and uh, I wasn't here, so you know, um, I think the last time we did a show was the New Year's. Uh, After the New Year. New Year's special, the Happy New Year special. It was uh, two, was three, the fourth. That I was the here. The fourth of Janvier. Oh, you're getting fancy now. Uh, a little French. Janvier. Janvier. Well, well, Mr. Janvier, Mr. Dosecki's Janvier, let me. Um, oh. Welcome to Progressive Discussion. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and it happens to be Saturday afternoon, Jean Vier, or January 11th, yeah. 2014. You see, I didn't make a mistake. 2014. Uh, hey, I made a mistake on one of my checks the first uh, time around. I you, had to change a 13 to a 14. I hope it went through. I'm good at that. I'm yeah. good at changing numbers. You're a forger. No, digits, yeah, not, not, not signatures. I don't forge. Yeah. I don't forge. But anyway, um, we're coming to you uh, live and recorded, by the time you get to see this, uh, from the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. And uh, it's raining out after the uh, dangerous Arctic vortex or whatever, polar oh. vortex. It is now a balmy, what time? Probably 55. 55. Very balmy. Yeah, the but polar uh, vortex is n North Pole weather. Weather that it should stay up in Canada, but because of the jet stream, it came down here. And this shows you how well insulated those polar bears are. You know, it's funny, uh, uh, all, all Arctic and uh, Antarctic creatures Antarctic creatures, they all are, from the time they're born to the time they die, they are always on a pure ketogenic Atkins diet. Fat, baby. They need fat. There is no fiber and veggies in the uh, in the Ar Arctic and Antarctic the circles. Veggies don't grow well in snow. <laughs> and how, how and they, I don't think they cook anything. I think everything is eaten cold. Ugh. Coal cuts. <laughs> oh my God. The uh, well, Inu Inuit animals, yeah. Eskimos, they eat nothing but coal cuts because how do you start a fire, you know, I mean, is wood very scarce? Very scarce up there too. Well, you're talking humans now, I'm talking about animals. What they what they say is the animal goes for the, for the guts first, the stomach, and they might be very warm considering the temperature of the animal. Well, the, I know polar bears like to hunt seals. Yeah, they like to hit it. They jump up <laughs> and they come down with all their weight on with their front paws, paws. and they break, they crash through the ice they and, they, the son of a and they surprise the, Ooh. they you know, I guess crashing hopefully knocks the seal on the head. Huh? They eat penguins too, no? No, that's not, that's not the polar bear. That's the leopard seal hunts penguins. There's a, there's a nasty, large, predatory seal down there in the Antarctic. Oh, boy. And I believe it's called a leopard seal. See, I know my shit, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me formally pipe aboard my co-host and mentor with my authentic bosun's whistle. Uh oh, aboard the uh, progressive liberal starship censored, it's called. Whoa, baby! He's the cap the capitan of the starship. Faster than the speed of light. How many? Uh, how, what kind of warp speed can you attain? Oh, we can cry. We can cry. We can go from this galaxy to the next one. To the next one. Ah, oh, man, come on! There's no stopping. Are you using worm? Are you using censored. worm? Are you using wormholes? No, we no can wormholes. travel. 
We have the discovery. I thought you were going to say it can quarry, can it quarry apple the way you were no. saying. No. Oh, it can. We travel fast. I'm in the speed of light. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> One thing. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard the progressive liberal starship ah, sensor. Ah, ah. Yeah, my ass. <laughs> the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling after two weeks of absent, absenteeism? I wasn't drinking no abstinence. No, no, no not abstinence. I mean... Abstinence, uh, no. We don't deal with that crap. Only the right-wing fundamentalists uh, yeah. uh, have to be pure. And chase. Well, where did it? Where did this thing about being pure and sex come together? I don't know. Nothing to do with each other. I don't know. In the Bible, they were banging everything in sight. I mean, well, the, even if you don't bang everything, the, in I mean, sight. the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Even if you just, you know, your wife and you. Well, where does this impurity come around? Yeah. How come you the, know? the Catholic Church, who, ah. who, which has tons of skeletons in their closet, they came up. Up with this idea that the disciples and Mary and Jesus and and all the uh, the canonized saints, everybody was celibate uh, from yeah. day one till they died. They, they were all celibate, and then yeah. the priests had to be celibate, which came much later in the history of yeah. the Catholic Church. They don't, they, but, they don't get it that uh, Jesus had brothers and sisters after and Mary was a virgin only when he was born. Only when Christ was born. Yeah. After that, her and Joe, you know, they did the thing. Yeah, well, you know, uh it's Her only brothers uh, and sisters. It's only nature, I mean it's only life. Uh but the Well it is better to marry than to burn, as Paul said. But isn't it funny how uh oh yeah, they is that why they used to put chastity belts on the poor girls during the Middle Ages? It, well, that was that's a possession thing. Okay. The okay. old man, you know, when he went on the crusade, right. he wanted to make sure that nobody else right. was tapping the, uh, the, the keg, the keg, the keg at home. You know. Well, don't the uh, don't the Muslims treat their women as a as a form of possession, in a way? I'm uh, sure every uh, every culture that treats women as second class citizens. Old world culture, yeah is a sick culture okay yeah whether they're Muslim or whomever okay all right now let me get started because I will definitely get started you have no idea what what we're going to talk about anyway I just want to say real quick uh, <coughs> give my condolences uh, to the friends and family of the uh, the uh, so-called the king of talk radio Bob Grant oh boy. passed away uh, uh, Roberto Gigante I believe he's from Chicago he died uh, after all these years of uh, being Sounds on the radio. Like mafia name doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Roberto Gigante. Well um, from Chicago. Yeah. Come on man. Well, yeah. Well <laughs> Al Capone was from Chicago. But he was a conservative, and we didn't agree with him. But he passed away, and uh, I, you know, when I was a kid, I used to hear him, and just like I used to hear Carlton Fredericks. So you know, it's 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 a shame. You know, the guy was uh, had a uh, extraordinary memory. I was uh, well, Bob granted. Now Carlton Fredericks had a, a almost superhuman memory, the way he used to recall details off the top of his Kreskin. head. Yeah, Carlton he, Kreskin. He was like Kreskin, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I just want to say that um, I want to start off by talking about the legalization of marijuana ac yeah. across the board, hook, line, and sinker. The whole kit and caboodle, right, is legalized in <laughs> excuse me, the state of Colorado. Yeah. Okay. Now, which is wonderful. It's a start. Okay. I'm sure others are going to follow. Yeah. Pretty soon they'll be growing hemp, I guess, and manufacturing it and, and making guess, money. I guess Jerry Brown of California kind of got the ball rolling. You know, the snowball rolling down the, the mm -hmm. mountain with legalizing industrial hemp. But guess what? Um, 
uh, and I want to point my finger at you uh, capitalist-loving conservatives. Mm -hmm. Marijuana was like um, 200 and, you know, b before they legalized it, it was uh, $275 an ounce. As soon as the legislation went through, the price went down. My ass. Because uh, everybody was flocking to Colorado to get their uh, legal marijuana, their fix, they jacked it up to four hundred dollars an ounce. You mean to talk tell about me? exploiting the consumer? You mean to tell me that capitalism got its claws into the marijuana in Colorado already? Buying low and selling high. Lickety split. Capitalism. As soon. As soon as the ink probably didn't even dry on the uh, in the books, as soon as it was legalized, the the motherfuckers, the 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 capitalists, as soon as competition gets in, it should go down. Scumbags, Jack. You know this whole thing about supply and demand. I think it's just a game. Yeah, it's of course, a, it's a game. It's an excuse to price gouge people. Profit, buy low, sell high. Yeah, don't okay, you? There's something wrong with that, doesn't? Don't and, people get it? And and let the buyer beware is is a way of uh, allowing bi uh, unregulated, deregulated businesses to rob you. Putting the fault on you. Putting the fault on you. Yeah, oh, you got event. ripped off. It must be your fault. Yeah, it's your fault, man. Yeah, it's your fault. Yeah, the same thing with stocks. Well, you oh, you know, yeah, well, well, you should maybe study them a little bit more or something like that. You know, don't d depend on the rating agencies. That's what they did with the before the financial cri you know crisis. Yeah. Uh, AAA was given to all the goddamn uh, securities, mortgage-backed securities that were worthless crap. But the rating agencies, because they were being paid by the banks to rate them high so that they could sell them to unwary customers, the devil. They gave them good ratings. Triple A, baby. The devil's economics. Devil's you know, in, in the beginning, in, in, in capitalism, you know, was an exchange. I bake bread, I uh, you make shoes, I go to you, I give you three loaves of bread for a uh, pair of shoes. But then came in, buy low, sell high, the merchant, the profit motive. <laughs> and that is the death knell of capitalism. As we always <coughs> point out, that the employer... He, pay, he pays you 20 bucks an hour, mm -hmm. you <clears throat> will be more productive for that employer than that $20. He's going to get more out of you than, than, than the 20 bucks he pays you. That's kind of like um, when an employment agency uh, books you for an assignment, the employment agency doesn't tell you how much the company pays them <laughs> per hour for you. I found out it's double. The employment agency gets whatever you're, if you're getting $12 an hour for your temporary assignment, yeah. the, you can be sure the agency is getting $24 an hour from the company. Is that just a one-time fee? That's or a big, no, every freaking hour oh, you on. work. Now, that's a racket in I my know, book. Shit. What do you What do you think? What the hell? That's a racket in my book. Shame on you. Uh, employment agencies, uh, and by the way, the uh, the benefit. Well, now it's uh, we have Obamacare, but before the benefits were horrible. The, the health care that employment agencies offered, you know. And I'm telling you, shame on you. The the Chisler's Hall of Shame. The first inductee are the employment agencies, who uh, very strangely have trouble. Uh, matching people with very good resumes with the proper employment. That's because the jobs aren't there. I, as I say. Oh yeah, tell that to the to the teabaggers that the jobs oh, aren't the tea there. Oh, the teabaggers aren't interested in that. They're interested in you dying to save their resources. That's all the teabaggers are interested in. The elites. That's all they're interested in. You dying. Stop sucking up my resources. Now, hey, I, let's cut these people off. Yeah. You can't get a job. Hey, you ain't getting no, you ain't getting no unemployment insurance. Sorry. Well, I'm I'm leading up to the uh, piece de resistance. Uh, I mean, the the grand finale is kind of connected to what you just said. Uh -huh.
but let me uh, I have two uh, before the grand finale I have this one thing to mention I I, I found out that um, either Washington DC is in the process of passing a law where um, immigrants uh, I'm not sure if, if it includes illegal immigrants but immigrants can acquire a license to practice law in the United States without being a citizen what? and and my hunch and I am I am very intuitive and partially psychic my hunch is that this is so the greedy law firms can get cheaper labor by hiring the uh, immigrant lawyers and paying them cheaper because they're not American citizens. It sounds strange to me. It sounds like some conservative right-wing propaganda thing. Because how you could an anti illegal... Anti an anti-immigration... Yeah. How could an illegal okay. go to lawyer school, law school right, and right. get a Pass the bar. Pass the bar and get a license or whatever you uh, you know you need to be a lawyer. A license to steal, yeah, I know. You well, they want it. so they so what what this if it's true if it's, if true, it's true what they're yeah. saying is they want to allow immigrants to be able to go to law school and take the bar exam. That's what if, they're saying. If that if, if first of all th they're not working on immigration right now. Mr. Boehner has nothing concerning immigration That's off the in the table. House. Well, now right now, what they're working on in the Senate is the extension of unemployment insurance, which the Republicans do not want. Of course, they don't want it. Okay, they don't That's want that. They don't want food stamps. They, I don't even think they want Social Security and Medicare and everything. What did you put up on Facebook Welfare. last night? That uh, that uh, ratio uh, of uh, eliminating poverty. Uh, 175 yeah. billion dollars and 700 billion trillion. going to the military or whatever. No, I think trillions go to the military. The military. Well, yeah, when you figure it all up. But I'm saying just, just uh, the uh, that two, those two er things. Eradicating, okay. eradicating poverty in America is astronomically lower than yes. the military budget. Right. So, and the military budget includes wasteful wars. And uh, war profits here. And it's well over. Like, <coughs> I got a figure from uh, I think it was Null, uh, one point four trillion. When you add everything wow. up. Wow. When you add everything. Now, uh, uh, Doctor Bill, the um, you had told me, and it was surprisingly low. You you told me that the percentage of individuals in the history of America who have taken themselves from ten um, percent. Uh, uh, from po oh, poverty yeah. and and were really pull themselves up by the bootstraps and are really self-made success people are only ten percent of the population. Ten percent over all these two hundred and some years. Okay, because I was I, I posted that <coughs> on the uh, Progressive Discussions Facebook group, which happens to be growing really fast, and I want to mm -hmm. salute my members. It's over seven hundred and twenty some mm -hmm. odd members now. Um, anyway, 10%, now you hear that teabagger trolls that are at the group? 10% in the history of America mm -hmm. has ever actually been a self-made success. It is much easier Everybody to else got a break or they were born with a silver spoon in their yes, mouth. It is much easier right. to succeed in America if you had wealthy parents. Right, Okay. if you're a silver spooner. Like, because example, Donald Trump was a silver spooner, and he was trained by his dad uh, in Donald real estate. Trump thinks he did everything by himself, pulled himself yeah. up by the bootstraps. He's a hey, get a better toupee. It looks he looks like he has roadkill on his head. <laughs> Listen, his son has a very nice hairstyle, by the way. Why can't he go to his son's uh, hairstylist? Yeah. He's too cheap. Or he, or he's doing it out of spite, so people talk about him. Uh, Could be because he still believes Obama don't have a birth certificate. Listen, a millionaire's money makes money 
all by itself. Is their money makes money. So as far as them working hard for their millions as an excuse that they don't want to pay taxes, it's all bullshit. They're all crocodile tears. And Mr. Mr. Grady, I forget his first name, wrote an article in the Wall Street Shady Journal. Grady? Yes, he is a Shady oh, that was, Grady. Uh, from uh, Red Fox's, uh, um, yeah, Grady Wilson from the Sanford and Son. <laughs> anyway, he wrote an article uh, about redist uh, redistribution in America, uh, or the the uh, inequality, inequality in America. Oh no, it, there's not really inequality because we're not counting all the other things for people and middle class and poor and everything that they get, like food stamps and stuff. Uh huh. He's, this is not income. No. This is not income. It's not it's income. the same thing. You got government programs, you right. got state programs, uh -huh. and they, they are counting life insurance as income. How could it be this income? This is ridiculous. If, it, if, if, it, if it's not liquid, if it's, it's not if, income. If it's not meant to be income. And let's say you were able to, a whole life policy, usually you can cash them in. All right? when you've uh, got a surrender value yeah. built up. You know why? What? Then you got nothing to bury you with. And that's an expense. Yeah. So how can it be income, life insurance? It's bullshit. It's all things to make so they don't have to pay the proper amount to you. They want to stiff Food you. Stamps. They want to stiff you. Well, no been no pun intended about the funeral. They want to stiff you. It's as I say many times. If we have poor in America, our job, our welfare programs are to do one thing and one thing only. Take them out of poverty. Not keep them in there in a dependent manner. So in other words, to get them out of poverty, what do you got to do? Give them a living, wa living wage. Give them a living wage. Exactly. And put take the tax burden off of the Working oh, stiff, off God the little forbid, guy. They'll never tax the rich because the rich are paying off everybody in Washington. Well, they're job producers, aren't they? In China, <laughs> Bangladesh. I'm glad you mentioned those names. Uh, Bangladesh, Banga, Bangladesh, Bangladesh, or Banga, Bangladesh, Bang. Who's Desh? Vietnam, Vietnam, like my grandfather used to say. Yeah, Vietnam. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of, this is the part that really set my blood pressure sky high. Ooh. And my blood pressure is normal. Oh, how can I begin? How can I begin? I begin to begin. Let's read my lips. What was that uh, Herbert no, Walker? No taxes. Thousand points of light. Thousand points of light. Thousand, thousand points of light. Thousand points of light. No. What the hell did that ever mean? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, it, it was fancier than Reagan saying, uh, well, I don't recall, you know? Well, he didn't recall well. anything because he had Alzheimer's, that's why. Now, yeah, towards the end. Now. No, towards the end. He had it when he was in. Really? Yeah. Well, then he was more of a puppet exactly. than uh, they would like. Why do you think North, Oliver North got away with what he got away with? You ever see the cartoon, the caricatures of Ollie North? He's got huge ears. They gave him big Dumbo ears. Was he wearing his military uniform? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now it's the serious part. Ugh. I know I can't resist a good joke, but this is no no joke. No joke, man. Shame on you, the second inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. But this is this should go into like the the insane demonic hall of shame. The Arizona Chamber of Commerce made one of the most asinine, stupid, infuriating uh, conservative right-wing statements that ha has ever been made. Well, they are ass-kissers from big business. These scumbags, and I hope somebody from the Arizona state government hears this, who, Jan Brewer? I don't know if Jan Brewer is behind Sheriff it. Sheriff Arpaio? Well, screw Jan Brewer with her phony... You can screw her, I ain't. Her phony uh, Cheshire cat oh grin on her, her face, that grimace. 
the Arizona Chamber of Commerce said uh, uh, to, you know, generally to the uh, unemployed in the United States, <laughs> you have to start, you should start competing with the, uh, with the salaries of people in third world countries like Bangladesh in or, uh, and then maybe you, you'll, you'll get a job. Compete with the people in third world countries and accept less money than what they get. Are you out of your mind? They're trying to compare the cost of living in Bangladesh with the cost of living in the United States? They've already... There's well, no comparison. Yeah, but they've already done that. They've lowered our standard of living over the last 40 years. But the cost of living keeps on going up. Exactly, as do profits compared to wages. Right, and 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 even though they cry crocodile tears, corporate America has seen record highs in their profits every okay. every year without paying taxes. Without paying taxes. Now, if Bangladesh, sixty percent of all corporations don't pay taxes. Yes, yeah. sixty yeah. percent. But you know, some stupid teabaggers still believe the tax burden is on these. Uh, Corporations, they must really. Yeah, they pay forty-two percent of all the taxes. You know why? Why? Because they're making the money. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to pay. Don't make the money. Right. Exactly. But you know what kind of a gullible idiot believes everything Fox News tells them? An ideologue, a fundamentalist. Numbskull. Numbskull. They so, do not change. So anyway, getting back to Arizona Chamber of Commerce. If Bangladesh is, if the people there are getting, let's say they're getting 12 cents an hour, which is really not mm. far from the accurate amount. Let's say they're getting that, because I heard they're, they're, they're getting less than 20 cents. Okay, and to buy a bag of rice or to, to go grocery shopping in Bangladesh, okay, compared to going grocery shopping in the United States, there's absolutely no comparison. Mm -hmm. But I've come to the realization <coughs> that these Republicans simply don't give a shit. Exactly. They don't care what happens to uh, the, uh, the mainstream population. Um, Somebody was yapping last night on uh, one of your uh, progressive discussions, I think. It might have been Caucasian bull or whoever, but uh, yakking his yak, and he was yakking about something, and uh, and I told him, I said, well, he was, uh, you know, uh, well, that's why you got to take the money out of politics. No kidding. You know. No shit. I mean, the, the corporations pay your con. Oh, it was about congressmen, right? Right, your congressmen. They don't do any good because the corporations and the wealthy and everything they pay your congressman, and he ain't gonna listen to you. No kidding. Nobody. That's why you need to get money out of politics. Nobody ever got back to me when I wrote a couple times to uh, Senator Robert Menendez, Democratic senator. And he's a Democrat. Even. You know what I got back? I got I got a automated. Uh, a generic automated uh, thank you that he sends that, that that they sent to everybody with a with a with a with a fake signature. That's with like a, you sending a message to a a a fan page of a celebrity or athlete or or entertainer and expecting that entertainer to read it and answer you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fat chance <laughs> there are other people running the site. Yeah. And in this case, there are people running. Senator Menendez's and everybody else's page yeah. and you know you don't get personal you you cannot personally as I I mean can you personally no. write your congressman or senator? you can write them you can call them but you don't but does your let me put it in the, the proper perspective yeah Alec the lobbyists they walk into the congressman the senator's office they hand him some moolah for his campaign chest, and they get whatever they want. You can't do that. No. Okay, unless you got the moolah in your hand, you don't even get in there. That's why it's... Unless it can be a photo op. Oh, yeah, ah, sure. I mean, then you I, might get to see him. Something that is, uh, that would help the reputation of the politician. Yeah. Um, but it's like, um... Hey, corruption and the money and is the corruption in politics. For God's sakes, every time there's an election, 
all you see is a is a Republican and a Democrat invited. You don't see an independent uh, candidate nope. invited anymore to debates. Nope. It's always the two f top Nobody bananas. Saw, Nobody effective. saw Rocky Anderson, Jill Stein, uh, William J. Eisenman, None and, of and them. the other independents that were running at the same time as Barack Obama and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, corporations are people, my friend, Romney. Yeah. You know, you didn't see those people. You didn't hear from them. Yeah, and that, you didn't hear their policies. No. No. Yeah, I mean, um, well, Barack Obama pretty much kicked uh, Romney's ass in the debates, and Joe Biden really kicked that Muppet face. What's his name? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Yeah, his ass. Oh, unbelievable. Well, who's that uh, that uh, douchebag? Uh, I don't know if he's a senator, Republican. Uh, with a, he's got a Spanish last name, and he's got Rubio. No, Marco. He's a Republican, right? The Republican. Um, they all have douchebag faces, every one of them, and jowly Especially too. Especially Mr. Of them. Turtle face. Oh, what an ugly fuck he is! <laughs> you mean uh, Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell, yes, yes. And turtles are usually cute, but not this turtle. So, all right. So, uh, okay. So, according to the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, if the Americans follow their advice and accept 12 cents an hour they're, st they're still going to end up homeless and in the uh, soup kitchens if there's any left yeah. in the poorhouse how is that going to help mainstream America who's out of work are yeah. they like are they for real uh, for them they are yeah for them they what are. problems are they solving when they give advice uh, they certainly are not solving the problem of sixteen hundred dollar apartments in Bergen County, New Jersey, on twelve cents an hour, are they? Even even the rents in Florida are, are like seven hundred, eight hundred, you know, and, and up. Even e yeah, that's you know, cheap. The, the, well, there's no you know the job market's even worse in Florida than it is in the yeah. Northeast. Well, yeah, but everybody retires and go to Florida. You know, you don't need a job. People go down there with money. Yeah. You do not go down there as a single younger person. Yeah. To Looking live. To get a job and, and make it, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even if, you know, if you work in retail, they go down there to watch Pelicans, man. That's what they do. You know. So what what I notice is all all of these one-liners, these so-called quick fixes that come from Republicans are not fixes at all. They're not solutions at all. They certainly are not fixes for the middle class or the poor. Nope. They are fixes for the corporations and the wealthy. So what they're doing is they're just sweeping the poor and the unemployed under the carpet, so to speak. They're, they're, they're pacifying you, making you think that uh, they're, just, they're just getting rid of you. They're not giving well, they're you an answer. Of, yeah, but they're not getting rid of their Tea Party baby boys and girls. You see, because their Tea Party baby boys and girls and etc. believe that they sent them there to Washington to make the government small enough to drown it in the bathtub. Because they were hoodwinked to believe that government is the problem. Exactly. And in reality, it's the, the deregulated corporations that are the problem. Exactly, because government, that is you and I, if we owned our government, which we do not, our government is bought and sold by the plutocrats, okay? Number one. But if we did own it, it would be the only bulwark against huge corporations and the wealthy's influence. Yeah. Well, they just want to keep... That's uh, why they want to make it small. They just want to keep, like, the military... Military, the to protect them, yeah. their gated communities. So you, when you are so poor and etc., do not come to their gates and and ask for bread. Well, you know those uh, underground... How dare you? Underground uh, condominiums in, in the abandoned Silo, mi missile yeah. silos? Yeah. They got like they hired like ex Navy SEALs to protect to guard it because if something goes down they know millions of people are gonna come to the silo. Help, I heard help me, please help I me. I heard I heard. That's all I'm gonna say. Believe for whatever I don't know. I heard 
that Homeland Security just bought up millions of bullets. Billions of bullets? Billions of bullets. So it's almost like Homeland Security is expecting something to go down. There you go. There you go. And if the Chamber of Commerce gets its way, something will go down. Oh, yeah. Okay. If people, uh, if people are, uh, if people, like... Hey, you push a rat to the wall, what happens? Yeah, when is an animal most dangerous? When it has nothing to lose, right? Exactly. When it has nothing to lose. Exactly. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's a rough situation, but uh, they have no answers. They have no solutions. Well, look at them criticizing Obamacare like crazy. Hey. Uh, they have nothing to replace it. And guess what? What? Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, is a Republican invention from the Heritage Foundation, and Romney puts it in Massachusetts. Because and here they are. Because it involves privatized exactly. insurance company. It doesn't involve the uh, the public single option. single payer. Yeah, public single option. Single payer Ooh. public option, which I would have I would have went for. Everybody would have preferred that. But like I'm like saying. a mod like a modified uh, uh, form of Medicare and make Medicare the, for all and make the rich pay for it like they should. Now. They're 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 giving the business to the private sector. So what are they bitching about? I don't know. That's my point. There are they're bitching because you know why? Why? Because they named it Obamacare. Yeah, they and they hate that man in the White House. They don't want to know him. No they don't want him to get credit for anything positive. Nothing. They in think, fact, think it's racism. Up to dollars to donuts. When Obama's out of office. And the new textbooks are ready for Texas. Yeah. I'll bet you they put something in there that he never was. To that effect. They give, they'll probably give credit to somebody else for the... Uh, Any good stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. let's say things work out, pan out with Obamacare. And so far, the multitudes of poor people have health insurance coverage, have health care that they never had before. And and and, and, that and that includes like the dentist too. Yeah, it seems that way. You know, I mean, a lot of people are very happy with it. I mean, now they can go get pick up their. Somebody told me they can pick up their pharmaceuticals and not pay a dime for it and and preventive. Uh, yeah, and they, like and they the, can see and they can. Not that I like mammograms. Yeah, the thermography no, 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 no. would be better. I like better, thermography but, better. Yeah. You know, these things are paid for. No, these are poor people that can now go to their local. Uh, internist, their local family practitioner, mm -hmm. instead of go to an outpatient clinic at some hospital and or go the on an emergency room and go on or go to the emergency room and go on a long waiting list to get to the clinic to see a doctor in the clinic. Mm -hmm. Now they can go to any doctor locally, and uh, if they like them, they can choose that person to be their family practitioner. And that's usually more or less an inter doctor of internal medicine, you know, in most cases, right? And they can go to him <coughs> locally and not have to go on some long waiting list. So, you know, as long as the doctor takes whatever you happen to have, Horizon, Blue Cross, Blue, Cl blah, 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 blah. Blue, blue Cross, Blue, blue Balls, Blue Balls, Blue Cross. <laughs> Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or or uh, United Healthcare, or whatever, whatever, whatever you have, yeah. you know, and you can go there, and, and it's 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 a lot less stress than going to some damn outpatient clinic with a, with, with herds of cattle, you know, in the waiting room, you know, and uh, what do you, well actually what you know you know what you see in the waiting room of outpatient clinics, I hate to say it, but you see a lot of pregnant. Um, immigrant young immigrant oh, women geez. that have uh, two bambinos two or three bambinos and one on the way and probably an absent husband boy oh, there's friend, never there's never whatever. any dude yeah there's never any dude there with him oh he likes to stick the old thing in there and you know the old chorizo uh, uh, bounce it around you know or push it in and out and then, uh, deposit his seed but then when the child comes out, he's gone. He's gone, man. 
No responsibility. Well, let me tell you something. It takes two to tango, and uh, uh, yeah, but it takes two to understand birth control too. Yes. Jesus Christ, man. Yes, exactly. And you don't get to understand it if you got the abstinence only education. Oh, like that goofball uh, uh, Sarah Palin's daughter just say no to sex. Well, well, what a bunch of bullshit that was. She didn't do was. it though, did she? Huh? She didn't do it though, did she? I bet she was more of a bull in the China cabinet because she had conservative parents. I well, bet they that, they're more them. rebellious. They're more rebellious, yes. Maybe that's why Christine the, uh, the Witch O'Donnell the, the minister's daughter. was a slut. In, yeah. um, Who? Christine the Witch O'Donnell. Oh. Maybe that's why she was a big slut in, in school, uh, from what I hear, because maybe her parents were like holy rollers. Could be. Evangelicals. It happens. It happens. Hey, Kate Perry, a singer Kate Perry. Her, fa her father was a, was a religious nut, a right-wing religious nut uh, mm. minister. Yeah, and, and, and he forbid them to celebrate Halloween at all. They couldn't participate in Halloween. -y. Well, you know, hey, Halloween is, uh, you know, Halloween. Yeah, but let the kids... It's kid not a religious Halloween. Let the kids enjoy their childhood. Yeah. That's what I say to my mother when she watches that big, fat, obese, obnoxious slave driver. What is that? Uh, toddlers and Tiaras or something? There's oh, some show woman. With, the, with the little the little yeah, girls yeah, yeah, that are yeah, 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 and yeah. she's cracking the whip and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the parents, their stage Isn't mothers, it? are living through their daughters. daughters. Is that the same program? She's fat and loud. Yeah, I know, but there's another. It's either another program or that program, where she's teaching them to dance and stuff. What the hell does that big fat slob know about dancing? Nothing. Nothing. What does she know? She's she's obese. But look at all the people. She's like a female Chris Christie. Look at all Christie. the people in the nutrition areas that were, you know, not great examples of fitness and nutrition and 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 health, and yet they open their big flattened mouths. Listen, uh, about the, the uh, six o'clock news put the microphone in front of a, a decrepit old lady that looked like she was ready to drop dead. Mm -hmm. She was a registered dietitian asking her for advice on should we or shouldn't we take a multivitamin and she's saying no you don't need it you can get everything all the nutrition you need from a balanced diet from the supermarket and, and this woman looked like she was gonna drop dead any second. You know it's amazing with the powers that be who they look up to for advice. Officialdom. If uh, the word comes down from officialdom, that's it. No argument, no debate. Yeah. That's it. It's like, um, I bet they know there's, there's tons of evidence to support therapeutic dosages of uh, nutritional supplements and herbal medicine and homeopathy, naturopathy alternative medicine, I bet they know there's lots of proof, but they do not want to acknowledge it. They do know that, but as Gary Null did at one, he was invited to a debate once a be, a, with the quackbusters, yeah. and he brought thousands and thousands of studies. They did not want to hear about them, I, nor did they want to see them. I would have ended up in a shouting match with them. I hope Gary Null uh, lost his temper with him. No. No, he didn't, not, huh? Well, uh, why didn't he? Because he doesn't, he wants it. Why didn't because he? Because you can't penetrate. Oh, I could penetrate. Lines. I could penetrate. <laughs> yeah, with a blunt instrument. But you can't penetrate an ideological All right, mind. you know what I would have said to them? All right, forget about the shillelagh. You know what I would have said to them? I would have said, I got multitudes and stacks of evidence on my side. Mm -hmm. What do you have on your side? The drug company, Big Pharma, paying you corrupt bastards off? You gotta hit them below the belt. You don't have to really, you don't have to bust a jugular vein. Well, you don't have to get an ulcer. The point you is, gotta hit them hard the with the right words. The point is that they don't, they are not open to anything but their but ideology, they their fundamentalism. But if they can't answer, your your very clever question. They are officialdom. The public will hear it. Ah, that's your only chance. The public will hear is that. Is getting the public to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. 
but you you will do nothing to change them, to alter them, their ideology, their fundamentalism. Pay, they're that paid is off, not man. alterable. You know, even in the Bible, God says there are certain people that are incorrigible. Especially when you're paid. They will die in the lake of fire Espe because they are incorrigible. Especially if you, you're paid to dummy up. That too. If you sold out to but Big Pharma. But there are ideologies that have nothing to do with money also. Wait a minute. You don't mm -hmm. think it's 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 old-fashioned corruption and, and money? That Once you get into officialdom, but I'm talking about before that. Oh no, I'm still There are people going to school and colleges and, 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 and within their uh, milieu, their culture, that have ideolo I ideologies and, and, and fundamentalism, uh, you know, that nobody's paying them to have those ideas. They just don't they just have, have the them. brains of an independent free thinker. They don't have an open mind. If you were a registered dietitian, first thing you know to and earn, you were the first thing you need to earn knowledge is an open mind. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But I'm saying a, a, a person with a certificate, let's say, believe it or not, to be a registered dietitian, <laughs> I, I laugh when I saw it. You need a master's degree. Mm -hmm. A master's degree. Mm -hmm. A master's degree to learn how to plan out those, disgu meals. those disgusting hospital meals yeah. that taste like cardboard and you get little blobs of this and that, little spoonfuls of everything in it. And they're giving high sugar and high yeah. carbs to a heart patient. Uh -huh. They're giving sugary foods to a heart patient. You need a master's degree to do that, right? Yeah. I'm being sarcastic. Now, if you have this master's degree in dietitian, dietetics, whatever, don't you think that person will be uh, clever enough to uh, explore the alternatives and you would ex think. explore clinical nutrition? You would think. Naturopathy, but there are there are people. I would say ninety, ninety-five percent of people who go to schools, colleges, and etc. They're there to learn the official whatever, and they're not there to do research on their own. They're there, you know. <laughs> I don't want to do homework. Too bad. They'll do anything to get out of homework. I know this is where you learn. I know this person who was getting a prescription from a nurse practitioner of a anti-anxiety, uh, it was a psychiatric medication. And the person said, hey, what about this uh, St. John's wort extract and uh, kava kava, hypericum and all this stuff? And the nurse practitioner raised her voice and, and practically bit bit the, the woman's head off, you know, saying, uh, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna go and do that, then uh, you're you're on your own. How arrogant! How arrogant! This nurse practitioner is the corporate whore for big pharma. Oh, well, doctors do the same thing. The the patient was just being an educated consumer, asking about Have you heard anything positive about St. John's? Now, since the nurse practitioner got all defensive, mm -hmm. maybe. The St. John's wart really works. Well, in the most times, what they are down on, they're not up on. See? Oh, uh, so it, it's kind of arrogance. It's ego. Arrogance so. and ego in the face of not knowledge, no knowledge. So instead of saying, you know what? That sounds interesting, yeah. sir, but I really don't know. I don't have the exactly. answer on St. John's wart. I'll ward. go check on it. I'll go check on it. I'll do some, re I'll Google it. There you instead go. of saying that. <laughs> Google it. Yeah, I'll Google it. Instead of saying that, yeah, exactly. they'll say, oh, don't take it. It's not going to do you any good. No, 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 no. It's no good at all. No good. Don't okay. even look there, because if you look there, you're, uh, you're not my patient anymore. Yeah, fuck them. Okay. Where's my... All right, now it's... How much time we have? And we've About been, 15 minutes. We've been yakking away. Okay, let's sink our teeth uh -oh. into these new readings. Not the old shit from two weeks ago. All right, since uh, only, any, any only people under a rock would not know is it a that the governor of New Jersey... Oh, my psychic, I'm doing the fat face. I, I knew you were going to bring him up. 
Mr. Chris Christie. Mr. Chris Crispy Cream Crisco Christie, who David Letterman was tearing apart last night with jokes, had a picture of a, uh, an image of him on the George Washington Bridge closing the lanes because he's so heavy. He was rocking back and forth. <laughs> well, <clears throat> he seems to be in quite a jam. Get it? Traffic jam. And David Bring the stinking bells. And for David that. Letterman said, Christy said, Mmm, jam, yummy. <laughs> the levity bells. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, jam, yeah. That Bridget Ann Kelly said what she said in her email to David Wildstein suggests that the subject had been already discussed very likely between Kelly and who? Was it Press Secretary Mike Druniak or Governor Christie himself? So it can only be one of the two. Who? She didn't say who. Probably someone else high up in the food chain. Well, it would have helped the case, the investigation, if she would have said who. Uh, yeah, but they are going to take the fifth, like Mr. Ambie. Wildstein has already done. He has taken the Fifth Amendment. That means He did say, though. That means he knows something. If he gets immunity, there'll be a different story. Yeah, okay. Christie is like, uh, he's like a thug. He likes to punish... People he that, said he's not a bully. He likes to punish people that oppose him, that do not comply with him. Well, that's typical political crap, isn't it? Hey, I was at a buffet one time, and these obese people, the whole family was pushing me, literally pushing me. Maybe it's part of the personality. Do you know that uh, Christie says he's working out? Oh, yeah, he's got a personal What the hell is he working out? He's his elbow, he's yeah, bending his elbow, the elbow is lifting the fork from the plate to his mouth. He's doing uh, a fork curls. This oh, fork curls. More this makes it more likely that Christie knew something was going to happen. That it was a massive traffic jam or something else is open to conjecture at this point. But dig deeper. There's plenty more there. For instance, how far in advance <coughs> excuse me, of August 13th email was the subject discussed? Who was part of that discussion? Also, there's a question I'd like answered. When did the Democrats and the press know that there was something untoward going on? Was it before the election? And was it held back for a reason? Or was it designed to be used against Christie after he was re-elected? Yeah, yeah, he's, um, yeah. Well, of course Republicans are going to say that. At best, Christie is guilty of surrounding himself with hacks and having no idea what was going on below him. That's a lot of hacks to surround that fat body. Which is hard to believe. At worst, Christie is lying, an almost paranoid politician along the lines of Richard Nixon. Well, now he's uh, humming a humming like Ralph Grant. Uh, yeah. You know, he's all, he's all humble pie now. Another fellow who had an election in the bag, but couldn't leave well enough alone. You know, it's always, it's, it's never the... Uh, it's never the problem. It's always the cover-up that gets you in the end and bites yeah. your ass. I'm still trying to figure out how the hell he beat Barbara Bono in a landslide victory. <laughs> landslide victory. Well, yeah. Because I'll she tell kicked you what. his she kicked his ass in, in the debates. I'll tell you two what. debates. Because she didn't get the support from her own Democrats. That's why. Uh, they sold her. Up. They sold their own people out. Yeah. Blue dog traders. Yeah. She was a uh, like uh, Lieberman and Senator Dodd and Baucus, who were who were against the uh, single payer public option for health care, right? Sellouts. Yeah, of course. 
Upon the record's November endorsement of Chris Christie to his second term as governor, oh, gosh. we sat down to write about our dismay and to rebut his alleged first term accomplishments. Yeah, rebut, that's a big but. On contemplation, we did not do so because past history teaches us that the level of arrogance exhibited by people like Christie would amount to a grand implosion in the future. It seems now that this petty schoolyard bully antics have resulted in his comeuppance. What we know about narcissists is that they have to be in complete control of absolutely everything. Photo op. C Therefore, come up and that's a funny word. To believe for a moment that he knew nothing of the complicity of his own office regarding Bridgegate come is up. absurd. Yeah. Bridgegate. Oh, they already gave it a cute yes, little pet name. Yes, they have. I like that. The obvious retribution against the mayor of Fort Lee and its community completely contradicts Christie's claim to work across the aisle. Everyone involved in this scandal was handpicked by none other than the governor himself. All the mea culpas in the world will not make this unseemly and possibly illegal situation disappear. I hope they put him on trial and and fry all the lard out of his body. We will depend on a thorough government investigation to get to the truth of this matter. That's right. The 2016 presidential campaign bashing has begun. I detect that this is going to be a defense of Mr. Christie. He's going to be going into 2016 with possibly quite a tarnish on his ass. However, however, they're going to, according to this letter, and I haven't read it yet, but uh, I believe that the that they will say it's a liberal attack. It's a liberal this. It's a liberal that. It's a liberal that. Yeah, a liberal witch hunt? A witch hunt. Yeah. They oh, but they didn't go on a witch hunt with, with Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky? Are you kidding? They tried everything! Jeepers creepers. The liberals are on the attack against Governor Christie for not knowing that his deputy chief of staff was involved with the George Washington Bridge Lane closings back in September. So... Do you think it's highly unlikely that these individuals took it upon themselves? Highly unlikely! To close the lane, the two lanes? Remember also back then, you know this happened what, in September? But back then, he joked about it, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was the guy out there with the hat, uh, in the, uh, with the cones. Oh, he was? Yeah, he joked about it. Uh -huh. Hey. One person had a heart attack because couldn't get to the hospital or whatever. Oh. People were late for work. People and, for this, that, and the and other. And somebody thing. got a panic attack on the bridge. And a panic attack and etc. Yes. Oh. oh, but that it's hey, isn't that the Republican um, feelings toward the crowd? Oh, they don't care. If the main, herd. They don't care if the mainstream suffers. Correct. Correct. As long as their agenda. Is accomplished uh, their their selfish, greedy agenda. Yeah. To think that petty politics may have been played by Christie to punish Fort Lee's mayor for not supporting the governor's re-election is outrageous. The governor had plenty of support from elected Democratic officials. To focus on one mayor was ridiculous. This was a case of an overzealous staff member trying to help her boss get reelected and her not realizing the havoc it could cause. That's a providing Christie knew nothing about it. Yeah. Well, even if he did, there has always got to be plausible deniability 
upon the head honcho. So Miss uh, Miss or Mrs. Whatever she is, Bridget Ann Kelly. Yeah. And she's not a bad looker, you know. Either. I haven't seen a picture of her. So, uh, she is falling on her sword, so to speak, uh -huh. to protect the big honcho. There's always no, a fall guy. No pun intended. Big I honcho. <laughs> well, it was a pun intended. <laughs> no, if it was a bun intended, are you sure Christy would gobble it right he up? He would have had it in no time. Jeez. Where did I leave off? Ooh, on? jam. Let's compare this to the involvement of the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton with the Benghazi attack in which four Americans were killed. Yeah, that was sad. Clinton knew nothing about repeated calls for more security months before the attacks happened. Really? She had a complete lapse of memory on the subject. We still don't have answers. Yes, we do have answers. The uh, New York Times uh, put them out the other day. It was a bunch of different militias and they were pissed off about that video. It, was a it wasn't Al-Qaeda. It was a retribution for the video. They didn't like it. But it was militias there in Benghazi. Why don't they just nuke them all? Why don't we keep our stinking mouths out of these places? Because we are, nose, nose we are actually doing God's work according to the Bible. Why, by taking their oil? By stealing their we oil? Are, we are making it easier for the king of the south to rise. Sounds like it. We are allowing all these uh, uh, radical Muslims to take over those states. Okay? Egypt, Syria, Libya, etc. And uh, we'll be led by Iran, the king of the south. Okay? That's what the Bible says. So well, we are helping. Iran, number, be Iraq. Nice, be nice to it or Iran. I want to get some more Persian clubs. Good yeah, boy. I can't seem to get authentic ones in the United States. Let's face it. The press and the media are in the bag for the president and his liberal agenda. I'd like to know one liberal agenda thing that Obama has done. No, they Name were, one. They were kind of moderate corporatists. That's correct. They, they were no. They That's were, correct. <laughs> I think they would say, "Oh, the stimulus! Hey, the stimulus was crap. Uh, stimulus it wasn't enough. Didn't do anything. It didn't go to the right people." Well, was what Bill was Bill Clinton being liberal when he signed Glass Steagall? Or the uh, welfare as we know it uh, law, where all welfare people have to get a job. Oh, what kind of job? Oh, he 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 signed that under pressure from uh, Newt Gingrich. From that fucking Newt Gingrich, that that fat fuck. Newt Gingrich is the one who made it difficult for all welfare recipients in he America. He was the Speaker of the House at Piece the time. Piece of shit out. Oh, I bet him and his family are living high on the hog. <laughs> you know, all these uh, uh, Republican uh, superstars in, in the spotlight are living high on the hog. Their kids would never, ever work for minimum wage. And they're living off government, aren't they? You know, I was going to say this much earlier. You know how... Um, when, if you shrink government down to nothing uh -huh. but the military, like Republicans want, privatize everything. Gee, just picture what it, what it would be like if uh, all of a sudden all the running water stopped flowing in your town or the electricity stopped. It did. We're in, in, in Texas where they, the, the water's all polluted now. For a long period of time. And just think, that's what it's like to have no government. Well, hey, they want to privatize water and stuff, so you won't have government control of it. Oh, that's... They don't want oh. the government, you, you, controlling Listen, the commons. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that in countries like Colombia, 
where they have all the uh, necessary services like you just said privatized I hear everything is like much worse than it was of course compared to when the government was controlling the water supply and the uh, power electricity and everything it, it, privatization always fails raises prices well because of price gouging and it, 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 it is worse service yes that's what I'm getting at okay finish up that uh, reading and then we'll go to lunch well I want to say something first there's no go ahead, go ahead there's a commercial running on television so where does the United States get get uh, 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 most of its energy and then they give you three choices and then the US itself and the answer is the US that's Na where we get most of our natural, energy oil and na natural gas natural and gas, yeah. but guess what? what it doesn't do us any good because we got to pay world prices for it Saudi Arabia it's 31 cents a gallon price gouge yeah because they produce it themselves. You uh, see? Venezuela. Oh, Venezuela has got a bad, bad criminal crap of problem. Yeah, crime rate. Yeah. No, well, I'm talking about the price of their. Well, hey, what what Joe Kennedy came over here, you Petro. know? Petro. Uh, Petro. Selling uh, selling the oil to uh, poor people for forty percent lower. That's right. The regular price. And 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 you know, God rest his soul, that uh, Hugo Chavez, he he reached out to help poor Americans with uh, home heating, home heating oil, yeah. and uh, he didn't do too well in the crime area, though. No, yeah. no, I uh, well that that uh, that was oh, she a model or an actress? Yes. She got killed. Yeah. Her and her her fiance or yep. something in the, in the car. And her kids. And there was a child in there too, but I don't think he. I think he survived child survive but listen when you when you go on vacation to a third world country you don't hop in your rent a car and start touring the countryside of a third world country when they know that a a rich and famous American or whoever is in their country vacationing yeah, and got some bucks these state people think it's like it's like some of these people on Facebook they think they're living in Wonderland. They think they're living in, in the land of Oz, you know. And, and they put all these banners up about love and rainbows and unicorns and all this shit. This is not the real world. Oh, God. Right. They, do they, don't they know that there's a very strong possibility, Dr. Bill, that everything they were told their whole life was a lie? Obviously not. From the time they were born in, until now? You know, they, a lot of people just take the easy way. They don't want to study. They don't want to learn anything. Lazy. They just want to party, man. I just want to party and, and have fun and feel good. Go to YouTube. I have friends that don't want to talk about politics at all. They just want to talk about pleasant things like their hobbies or going to a party and and getting buzz or getting high or it just, suds, man. We're, we're, we're suds. you know they don't want to talk about what's going on no. and get and involved. That's why what's going on goes on. What's going on is going on. It goes on because less and less people care exactly. and get involved. Exactly. How many people show up at the town hall meetings? Not a lot. Not how many people percentage wise? Unless they're conservative. How many asses of the masses show up at the polls to vote every election? Not a lot. It's always under 50%. That's a shame. I think, though, I think the last election with Obama, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was over 50%. You know, it was All right. a big one. I mean, he won by like six million, something yeah. like that, over Romney. Well, thank God for that. His wife reminded me of uh, the time Barbara Bush says, uh, let them eat cake by the Hurricane Katrina. There, hey, it was a step up for them. It was a step up for them to sleep on, on, the, on, the, on the floor of the New Orleans Superdome. It, they should be thankful they're sleeping on, on the football field of the Superdome. I guess those people who died should be thankful, too. Yeah, that yeah. they're out of their misery? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, she's eating uh, surf and turf and... Black Angus filet mignon in her mansion. Well, she was in the hospital the other day. 
Well, because she's old now. Some yeah. sort of respiratory problem, maybe pneumonia. She's old. She wasn't as old back then during Katrina. Yeah, but old and uh, immunity, you know, you don't have to have bad immunity when just because they're old. Listen, I hate to tell you, but Jack LaLanne, the, the way he, as health conscious as he was with the supplements that he took and the juicing and the fitness, I know he was in his 90s. I think mid to late 90s. I know that. But but he shouldn't have died from a an infection. Yeah, that's what he died from? Yeah, his immune system should have been through the roof. Well, you know, I mean, we're all, we are, we are all subject to, to our telomeres. I mean, that's that's well, just the way it is. Unless he just kind of like like went off the program for some reason and because he was uh -huh. old, he thought he was going to live Well, forever. you know, a lot of people mistake fitness for health. Oh no, you could be burning yourself out in the gym and if you don't get the right nutrition you in your repair. body and you're not eating the right foods. You have to repair the damage you do. Listen, any any trainer and nutritional consultant, nutritionist that's worth their salt will tell you, and let pepper. them wait. Salt and pepper. No. They'll tell you that the diet plays a much bigger role than you think. You mean the GMO one? Huh? The GMO diet. No, no, that's poison, man. What? GMOs? What? Genetically modified, uh, uh, uh... Are you speaking against... Toxin? Yes, Monsanto? I'm speaking... Yes, I'm speaking against Monsanto. Oh, my God. You like apples? No. Well, I'm speaking against Monsanto. Not How do you like them apples? Apples are very good for you. I got I got that from the pro wrestler, the Kodiak Bear. He said he says you you, you say to somebody, do you like hey, what was that wrestling thing? Do you like other? apples? And you, you huh? What was that wrestling thing the other day, which I didn't get to see about the old timers? Oh yeah, they had a uh, Monday Night Raw old school yeah, or old yeah, timers. Yeah, 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 Roddy yeah. Piper was there and a whole yeah. bunch of others. I yeah, that. I missed that. Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, you know, with that good. laugh of his. Oh, <laughs> that would have been good. Everybody has his price. All right, listen. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, uh, uh, followed by what? Hot, uh, mega vitamin C or? Well, something like that. Lunch. Let's just say lunch. One more tea. I already got tea. Right. And uh, we will be back, well, I will be back with the one and only uh, voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III. I will be visiting with him and see what he has to say this week. And I, and I think he's got an important subject to bring up, too. And then we will be back to a little more Christy Basher. Yes, we, we might as well stick to Christy because, you know, he's all over the news. Yep. You know? All right, we'll see you later. After Billy Morrow, of course. I know Billy is anxiously awaiting me, so while Dr. Bill is eating, I will go to Billy on location. Okay, while the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is uh, having his lunch, I am here with the one and only William H. Morrow III. How are you feeling today, sir? Out of it. Tired. The weather's kicking me. Yeah, well, the old man Winter is definitely here, and uh, we're having uh, an Arctic blast. Um, we were talking off the air several times about the uh, social service system, the welfare system, how it seems to be deliberately uh, set up to to not to work. It, how the uh, the conservative politicians have sabotaged it in a way where if you apply, somebody applies for social security disability or even welfare, by default they are turned down the very first time. That's automatic usually. It's, yes, it, unfortunately it is automatic. They will usually tell you to be prepared to be rejected or, or denied because that's procedure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely not a fair procedure, but it is. And uh, also the amount they give you, it's even worse than the minimum wage. It's, it's so far below the cost of living. Well, the bottom line, you're living below the poverty level. Let's put it that way. way below. That's the best way of putting it. I think the poverty level is 23,000 something. 
Oh, then forget it. Then, then social services, the amount they give people is, is, is in, in the abyss. It's, it's in a bottomless pit. Yeah, yeah. I had one person say, basically what you're doing, you're a homeless person with a roof over your head. You know, that was very, cl very clever. It's, he said, if you look at think of it that way, you are a homeless person with a roof over your head, basically. Yeah. I said, I never thought of it that way. I said, no, that makes sense. So. Yeah, you just, you, it's like taking a homeless person and saying, Give uh, a roof or a tent or something. Here's a tent, here's a, here's yeah. a shed. And then if things are real bad, they won't throw in these damn shelters, which aren't worth a damn, which are absolute nightmares. What goes on in these shelters? Right, and and food uh, stamps is, is 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 merely a drop in the bucket, too. Food stamps is next to nothing. What they and they they complain about it. You can only afford basically the basics. Don't dare go near a deli. Uh, canned goods. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Really, that's about all you can really yeah. go for because basically everything else is too high. You uh, you go near a deli. If you want roast beef, okay, yeah, I look for sales. I know everybody's gonna argue. Well, you gotta cut down, buy less, buy a quarter of a pound. Well, you know, everybody has an argument. You've gotta quit this, give this. How much must people keep giving up and quitting? When can they start living? It gets it, tiring. It's not life, it's existence. Giving up, giving up, giving up. People get so tired of giving up. It means quitting. making sacrifices. Sacri How much can you sacrifice? But, but, the, but the politicians and their families never sacrifice. Well, how, why should you? You're making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year. Why should you yeah. sacrifice? But why should you... It's easy to talk big when you have money and you're, you're comfortable as can be. Right. But you know? why should they get perk? Why should they get free perks if they're getting 175000 a year? Because that's the way this, the, the federal system works. They have it set up that way. Well, I don't know if it's set up or whatever. That's just the way it's always been. Basically, as I said before, their salary is basically disposable income. They have food allowances, rental, or whatever, mortgage, who knows what all is paid. Best health care. How do you know what's being paid for behind the scenes for them, too, as well? That might be milking the system and, and seem unfair. We don't know. Right. And then there's the... And then there's the um, of course, they probably have the best free health care. Of course. That's called benefits. Yeah. They get every benefit in the world. Yeah. But heaven forbid a poor person should want... Poor people don't count. Should want food stamps. Uh, poor people don't count. A few, a few crumbs. So you're basically a non-human in many people's eyes. To me, a human is a human. I don't care how much money you have or how, how little money you have. A life is a life is a life. I... Sadly, a lot of people don't look at it that way. Yeah. Fortunately, a lot of people do as well, right. though. And you have organizations that do go out there to help people. And they um, they make people at that go to the welfare uh, uh, center. They make you feel. Uh, they make people feel subhuman, like they're invisible. Well, or sometimes, like they're sometimes, sadly, their attitudes of the employees. Not all, but some, a good many. Are, their attitudes are deplorable. They make you feel like dirt, and they know that you can't argue because they have the upper hand. You need them. They're holding you down. Make a stink, we'll kick you out of here. You get nothing. They love that little bit of power they're being given. Why? I don't know. And it's wrong. It's it's ego. It's uh. It's it's uh. Did um, you take that job because you want to help people, or just because you needed a job? Well, a lot of what I've seen when I've taken friends and other people there, you should not be in that position. You well, don't care much about people. Well, if they hate, if they hate the job that much, leave. Now, don't get me wrong. I have seen some there that have been absolutely wonderful, tremendous. But I've seen a lot of nightmare people too. They have the personality of basically a snow pea. You know, they can barely grunt out a hello back to you. Yeah. They're rude. They um, don't return your phone calls. And they treat you just like oh. Well, they've never heard of a phone. I mean, the uh, voicemail. They have a voicemail, but they never return voicemails. I've heard of people that had to go through four and five different divisions, go to the supervisors and beyond, because so-and-so didn't return a phone call to them. And finally, it got done. And they said, this has got to stop. 
I've called you and called you. You don't return a phone call. What is your problem? Why are you in this position? Because you're in a position of power, the upper hand again, you're saying, screw you. I'll call you when I feel like it. But the bottom line is, you never feel like it. That's the sad part. Yeah. And that's wrong. Yeah. Um, now, I, um, one of our people interviewed somebody who was collecting social services, welfare, you know, and um, they, um, they had an interesting story. They brought in the uh, material that's requested of them to reevaluate their uh, their Not case. Required paperwork. Yes. Yeah, required yeah. paperwork. It's yeah. done. Uh, what it's done every uh, uh, once or twice a year, I think. So anyway, they bring it in, and they bring in their bank statement. So the person was actually denied benefits because the bank statement showed that there were certain deposits made into the checking account and those deposits happened to be money that was uh, given by family members to pay for car insurance and the and the and the, and the lousy stinking hundred and forty dollars a month that this individual was getting he had to take it out of the family's first card and deposit it in his checking account. I don't understand how monies are moved around sometimes. And, yeah. have to be moved so around. they questioned, they said, what well, Deposited in a different way, moved around to yeah. do this and take it out. For, it's, so, they so, see one little movement, they look for any little thing to pick on you about. Yeah, so they, they said, well, where's all this extra income coming from? He says, what do extra you mean? Income. It's from you. It was, in other it was words, not extra income. they didn't bother to look at the the the, uh, the debit to the yeah. checking account. How, they where did the money come from? How did it get here? Blah, 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 where did it go? Thing. Where was it going? It's yeah. They're just looking for four, over a hundred some odd dollars, as you said. But boy, if you screw people out of millions, they leave you alone. It seems very, very unbalanced and unfair. Yeah, if you're Goldman Sachs and you screw people out of millions, right? Uh, yeah, they do leave you alone, especially if the politicians. Well, Bernie are Madoff too. Yes, I know he's in prison now for life, and he got away with this for 20 or 30 plus years. Even when the SEC was warned, they did nothing. So let's be fair here, okay? They're, they're cranking on your friend or whoever it is. Yeah. Over the hundred plus hundred. Hundred forty dollars a month, I which mean, is ridiculous. Come on, come on. We nitpick. Yeah. They go after the small money because I think that's the weaker species or part of the human species part. Well, they, they really have a... It's ha easier to get with small money. The elitists really have a hatred for the poor. It's almost like they want to they want to cull the herd. So Why? Poor? That's only a dollar sign. There's different de definitions of rich and poor or wealth. Yeah. I know, like I, I, I said before, I, I know a lot of wealthy people, very wealthy people, that have very little money. I know a lot of people with a whole lot of money that are very poor. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, and what, what about when, what about corporate welfare, well, like how you, bailouts? How do you measure wealth? Uh, a person who is uh, has peace of mind and who is doing ethics, what they love. Ethics. Well, no, how you treat others. Ethics, morals, the whole bit. True right. wealth. It's when you take care of other people, look, you care about other people, you have a heart, you have a soul, a mind. Uh, you know, everything, sadly, too many people measure by dollar. They, he's super wealthy. He's a genius. You're not a genius. What if a mentally challenged young man, say with Down syndrome, inherits two hundred billion dollars? Is he a genius? No. Let's stop measuring everything by dollar signs. That is not genius or intelligence or whatever you want to call it. Really, what is true wealth? What is true poor or poverty? I think it's how you think and act and treat others. How your behavior as a human being, or as a non-human being, per se. Right, exactly. Uh, some people behave like a non-human yeah. being, the way they treat others and the way they treat animals. Uh, as you know, I'm a big animal advocate. I love animals right. to pieces. Uh, that's another topic I would like us to see down the road. And I'm very strong for this. Much, much. Why, why are penalties for hurting or killing or abusing an animal less than doing it to a human being? Why not make it the same or close to it? Yeah. You get two or three months in for killing a little animal, a little cat, a kitten, a dog, or whatever. Why? I say take your ass to jail and lock and lose the well, key. Well, I'm, I'm happy we have an ASPCA. Well, I'd like them and the other organizations to do a lot more. 
Peter? and fight harder, fight, fight the government harder for tougher, more strict, more stringent Peter? penalties. Oh, well, Peter, they, all of them, any of them, all of them together. Well, there seems to be an overall lack of compassion in today's society, that's for sure. You know, Why? Whether, whether it be poor people Why? or animals or... Uh, Why know. is there a lack of compassion? Yeah. You know, everybody talks about it and this and that, but what are you doing about it? Everybody talks big. I thought you see some people, we have all these damn lobbyists, lobby for the... For stricter penalties on animals. Don't lobby for the ethical treatment of animals. Lobby to get these sons of little bitches that abuse animals. Yes. Go after them. You do it, you're getting the same as if it was a person. Right. And I, I strongly believe in that. I, in fact, even further. Uh, I, just, oh, I just don't go for Oh, the, the abuse is a unbelievably high with animals, uh, without a doubt. It's, it's unbelievably it's high. unbelievably high towards humans, too. You've got adults killing little children. Each other. Ex-spouse, yeah. spouse, spouse. Oh, yeah. man. It, well, runs, you, it runs the gap. Well, you know when they, they, find, they find animals with their ribs sticking out, like dogs and cats? Uh, uh, these, these puppy mills, kitty mills. I mean, just, just uh, I mean, they find dogs that are just not fed. It's like people. Why get? Why did you do that? Why get an animal? Why did you do that? Why? Yeah, but if they don't, they don't intend on being responsible as a, and what for their, they get? For what their they children get? or or pets. What do they get? Well, a they slight do. fine, maybe a month or two or three in jail. That's about it. That's about it. Why not stronger? What if you did that to a child, or to somebody, or this moron that just committed suicide from Cleveland that held those three young girls for ten years? I think one was twelve years. Why not the same penalties? Is an animal any less of a, a living creature being than a human? I don't get it. I do not understand this. And I don't like it, because I love animals. I love people. I think, uh, go after, excuse my language, you might have to edit this out, go after it. An asshole. Punish him. Yeah. Simply put. Now you got these. The, the, like with the we're getting back to the welfare system. They 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 notice the the um, the credit to the man's account, but they didn't notice the same money was debited to pay bills. So they but only they didn't look at the form. They just went dollars and dollars and plus or minus. Didn't see where the transactions took place per se. So what I'm getting at is possibly they were looking for an excuse to boot him off, just like the general in, in Hackensack, New Jersey, the homeless man who did was a good Samaritan and oh, found eight hundred dollars. Uh, and they said that was some kind of income, earned income, unreported income. Unreported income. Are you kidding? He turned it into the police. Yeah. And they, they, his benefits. Well, yeah. The press. That didn't last long. He got his benefits back. I think he got a job too in an apartment. People right. said this is enough. But this is how they think. They go by dollar plus or minuses, dollars and dollars and cents, and they nitpick. He unreported income. Yeah. He turned in a lot of found money, and they treat him like dirt. Is that what we 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 are as a species? Yeah. Well, their, their objective was to boot him off. Why? Not to be fair. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Right. Uh, well. So your objective, what you're saying, is your objective is go out and let's let's hurt as many as we can. Let's hurt them. Let's go after them. It's, yeah, it's like a war. We're, we're the upper hand. They they need us. We don't need them. It's almost like a deliberate class war of, on the poor. It is. And a lot of times, sadly, it's our legal system, too. It's the law against the public. It's a war. They're out to, quote, get the public, us. They abuse. Look at my, my ticket a year or so ago for my tire touched the paint on the highway. That's, an, that's absurd. Yeah, it is absurd. Your tire touched, touched the, the paint, paint on the highway. highway. And they gave you a ticket. And the cop was looking right at me. And I told him, the officer, you saw the backup in traffic. You saw me trying to squeeze in. He goes, I'm sorry, your tire touched the paint. He smiled. He was looking. He, he, knew, he knew he got mad. I can't argue. He, prob do? he probably had a quota. No, bottom line, it's the odds. It's gambling. They realize the vast majority can't be bothered going to that court date for the $85 for your tire touching. 90 plus percent, I'm sure, will say, screw it up. Wait a minute. Is that what the ticket was? $85. Just because your tire, tire touched, touched the, the paint, paint on the said, highway? He said, your tire touched the paint. I said, what? Well, then I said, are there hidden cameras? This is some kind of a punk show or whatever. I said, this is insane. I've never heard of my tire touching paint. It sounds like a punk show. Yeah, it sounds like you're being pranked. My tire touched the paint. Ooh, I'm a threat to society. <laughs>
85 top mass murders don't get fined. I'm fined 85 for my tire touching paint on a highway. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's like 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 fascist stormtroopers. You know. You know, it's uh, the it system. Like you want to say kiss me? You already effed me. Really? Yeah, I mean the, the system. We all know the system. And what are you gonna do? Argue? Yeah, you have your day in court. The majority can't be bothered. People are busy. They realize people come home from work five, six o'clock. They don't want to rush to court at seven o'clock. Yeah. The majority will pay the eighty-five dollars. It's gambling. They realize the odds. They're, they'll make money. They're laughing behind the scenes. We'll make a buck. Now, do you, you want to hear another story no. about about cops pulling somebody over? You, you remember Robert, the accountant from mm -hmm. the Players Club? Well, I was in a in a car in his car, and we were in Belleville, New Jersey. And uh, I think it was a North Arlington, I forget. But anyway, w there was a cop was was um, he s he stopped somebody, um, and uh, he was finishing up with the individual. So instead of Robert stopping his car and waiting, he just went around the cop car to continue driving. All of a sudden, the cop followed us, pulled Robert over, and said. Uh, I'm going to give you a ticket for ch channeling, channelization. He says, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Your, your car was stopped in the middle of the road. You're busy doing something, yeah. so I went around you to continue on my way. Right, all he did was go around, the, the cop was parked, and he just went around instead of sitting there waiting for the cop. Why should you wait? You're not the one pulled over. Right. So what is, you know, so he went to court. He went to court and, and, you know, he took it to court and he says, to a traffic judge, he says, what is this channelization? I'm being, I'm being fined heavily for channelization. I just simply went around the police car. He said, and the judge says, keep quiet and pay the fine. Oh, that's now, does that right. sound fishy? Is yeah, that that's just not right. See the upper hand, you can't, you're not even allowed to speak. You can't even, they cut you off. So why even go to court? It's like... There you go. Channelization. Because what, what? You, Did you ever find out what channelization is? I don't know, because you, you, you don't feel like waiting for the police car to move? Why should you have to wait? Why should you wait? You go. They go around you? Yeah, I don't understand this. Well, if you were double parked, they would give you a ticket though, right? Oh, I've heard some uh, strange, strange things. Channelization. I don't, it's almost sounds like, like you're channeling people on other lives are passed over. You're yeah. channeling. Channelization. What is it? I've never heard of that. It's very surreal. Mm -hmm. Very surreal. Be quiet and pay the fine. Yes. Shut up, shut up and pay the fine. But Bo Robert says, What's, what did I do wrong? What's channelization? Did they tell him what he did wrong? They never explained what it meant. You have the right to know. Somebody's in front of you. Somebody is parked in the middle of the street. What do you do? You go around them. I've seen people go around other people m multiple times. But, but the cop decided to ticket him for this channelization, which means it could have been made up just to get more revenue for the, for the town. Maybe maybe the the mayor of the town himself was was oh, crooked. Corrupt in, in New Jersey, do you think? Uh, We're the most corrupt state in the nation. Well, I, all I have to say is one word, Bill. Cronyism. Nepotism. Nepotism. They create jobs for, uh, and I know firsthand, they create jobs for... Uh, family members and or friends. I could give you numerous examples, but I don't wish to name names. In so. Incompetence. Incompetent people get these jobs. Well, of course they do. It's a job that never exists until so-and-so needed a job. He's created it. High school. It's created to get six figures. Drives around the town on a town official car all day long doing nothing. Yeah, well, you know firsthand of, of that, people that work oh, for the town? Numerous from where I come from. I can name you numerous examples. They just putt around, they cruise, they Jobs cruise up. Jobs created for them, and they walk around like they're hot shots now. I said, you wouldn't have this job if it wasn't for so-and-so. You want to know something? No. Those, getting back to the state uh, welfare caseworkers, they can very easily be laid off. They could be in the same position that the unemployed person or, or the, uh, the poor person or the homeless person. It doesn't take long when you stop paying your bills and your rent and your mortgage for light, your life to change rapidly. So they could be laid off at any given time. It's easy for all these people to criticize how easy it is to overcome when you're rolling in money or, or very comfortable now. And all you gotta do is pick yourself up by the bootstraps and blah, 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 blah. Hey, you're living in a McMansion or what have you right now. Okay, it's easy to talk. You know what? I'm glad you brought Let's that. Honest, I'm glad that. you brought that up. It's easy to preach when you're not going through it. 
you know, I'm so glad you brought that up because pe this whole concept of pick yourself up by the bootstraps is nonsense because in order to make it in life you have to have a break somebody has to give you a break yeah how do, how do I pick myself up by the bootstraps yeah what does that mean how, how do you, yeah how do I do that mm -hmm. it's almost like well fine but it feels like my bootstraps have been cut Right. How do I do this? But if there's no opportunities in front of you... You say it's so easy. You say it like it's nothing. It rolls off your tongue like, oh, you gotta do that. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah, walk a mile in our shoes or anybody's shoes out there that's having struggling problems. Well, e even so, if somebody uh, had two minimum wage jobs, guaranteed, with the rents and the cost of living in in, uh, you've got in, that in this area... You've got people working two minimum wage jobs that can't make ends meet. Yeah. Especially with the more, every single additional mouth you have to feed me, so that's more money going out, the, out too. Well, the people who say, ah, hey, why don't you go get a job and pick yourself up by the bootstrap? I've got two jobs. You, what but, do you want from me? But the people that say this uh, usually are financially well off. Right. It's easy when you're a multimillionaire or whatever, say, oh, well, well, go out there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? What was your job? You got through so-and-so or your uncle or this or that? Oh, it's really easy. You know? Pick yourself up by the boots. It's easy to talk. When you're on. Yeah, when you're on top. Yeah. You know, it's it's a belief. So people people need a break in order to pick themselves up by the bootstraps. They need that. Anyway, William H. Moore the third. It was it's wonderful as usual. Until next time. Until everybody. next time. Bye bye. Bye bye everyone. Okay, I just want to, we're back, I mean with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. I just want to say thank you once again to William H. Morrow III for my visit with him for this week's uh, Progressive Discussions um, uh, on location with William H. Morrow III. Bye, Boy, bye, voice, Billy. Voice over. Bye, bye, Billy Bond. Phil is dead, you know. Which Bill? Phil died. Who's Phil who? Everly. Oh, you're talking about all these music. All, oh, Bill, yeah, Bill Moore I'm talking about. The guy I just left. Bye-bye, Billy. He's alive and kicking. Anyway, Bye -bye. thank you, William Morrow. All right, now let us sink our teeth back into these readings. And I have a funny feeling we're still going to be talking about uh, the dirigible, the, the blimp, the uh, obese uh, uh, Republican governor of New Jersey and his uh, Bridgegate dilemma. Would you buy a bridge from this man? No. Neither would I. I hope Christie doesn't cave in to these pressures. He would make a strong president. <laughs> Which is what our country needs now more than ever. <laughs> oh yeah, you need Christie more than ever. Sure, he'll 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 uh, <laughs> he he'll, he'll close uh, the Washington Monument. Well, he closed food pantries for the homeless in New Jersey, so there's no telling what he would close. Got rid of teachers. Got yeah. rid of health care for women. Oh, he did close some. Yeah. Planned Parenthood. Yeah, cut the mula. But gave uh, tax cuts to the rich. He closed some Planned Parenthoods or all of them? Not Planned Parenthoods, health care. I don't know if they included that. Oh, oh. That's another whole issue. That's a religious stupid issue. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the whole we don't make religious laws in this country. Why do they keep on trying to mix church and state? Because it's a controlling mechanism. Tax the bastards. If these religious leaders... Uh, like your Pat Robertsons and uh, the rest of them, if they like to stick their Pinocchio nose into politics, make them pay taxes. Well, <laughs> churches should be paying taxes in the first place. As somebody put up on Facebook the other day about Andrea Bacelli, whose mother could have aborted him because she was told at the time that he would suffer something. She had something done 
uh, around her belly and etc. And they thought there was going to be some damage. So to the what? Fetus. What the tea bagger was trying to say was, if she would have aborted Andre, uh, we wouldn't have uh, Andre Bocelli. Bocelli? Yeah. Then he wouldn't be he wouldn't be around to do what he. But what did he do actually? He's a singer. Oh, he's blind. Blind, blind mellow jelly. The point is, though, I said, wasn't it nice that she had the choice? Because if it were up to religious nut Republicans, the choice would be gone. You would have no abortions. Yeah, like that. Look at Texas right now with their train. What about that lunatic uh, <coughs> Rick Perry? No, Rick should be in a sanitarium, Santorum. Santorum, yeah. Another idiot. Another religious nut. Yeah. Evangelical right-wing nut. But the point of that is, all of those stupid laws are religious laws, and they do not belong in our law books. Yes, and taxpayers in America come in all forms, even atheists, and you have to respect everybody and... Uh, you, not one penny should be spent on religion. Well, it uh, is because ever since George W. Bush, we are giving money to faith-based organizations but, every but year. But faith-based is not proven. Doesn't matter. We're doing it. Not proven. And that's religion. That's mixing government with religion. Uh, tax taxes should only go towards things that are proven. Or to secular stuff. Yes. We're not here to support religions. Uh, no, we're not. No, no. If you happen to have a stupid idea about something and you want to make a religion out of it, you know, hey, go right ahead. But support it yourself. Don't ask me for money to support it. Or anybody else. That's like in... Uh, support your cult. That's like in the Middle Ages if they, they produced textbooks that said the world was flat. And children were learning that the world is flat. Yeah. And money was until, spent on these stupid textbooks. Until Cristofaro Colombo. Well, the uh, the uh, the Native Americans uh, and and the and the blacks are not too happy about Christopher Columbus. No, they're not. But he did show that when you sail to the horizon, you do not fall off the earth. Yeah, he, he wasn't promoting the slave trade. He, it was the Spaniards who, who got this idea to, uh, to steal everything from the Native Americans and, uh, and cast people into slavery. Well, they were after gold, African baby. Americans, uh, they were after gold. And they were too lazy to do the dirty work themselves. Yeah, of course. So, so isn't that a form of corporate greed? in a different form. That is one way, way in the past how people got rich. You took it from somebody else. You 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 kidnap people, you f force them through extortion measures to become your slave. They work for free. Uh, now you don't have to pay laborers. <laughs> and there's more profit for you and you go around pillaging and plundering and, and you bring a representative of the Catholic Church with you. Exactly. <laughs> Stealing... To give you justification. Forcing your ideas of religion... On those savages. And, and government. Yeah, everybody's a savage yeah. except the conquistadors. Yes. Everybody exactly. else was a savage. Yeah. Exactly. Sounds like really... Uh, sounds like what they're pushing for. Sociopathic thinking. Sociopathic yeah. thinking. Like the right wing? Yeah. The right wing are sociopaths and they also lack the hormone oxytocin. That's my theory. Okay? Oxytocin. Well, I, don't, I don't know about lacking a hormone, but I know they contain probably uh, the influence of a demon. They Plus. have wicked bile in them. Yeah. Wicked bile. Well, speaking of bile and, and all kinds of bodily flus, let's get back to Chris Christie. It's what did he know and when did he know it time uh -huh. in New Jersey. As the recently released emails show, 
Governor Christie, whose popularity stems in part from his crusade to clean up corruption, practices the same politics that he has inveighed against, for example, the stabling of political cronies in well-paid public authority jobs, which they use to reward or punish political activity affecting the governor's interests. The result is that the public interest is damaged in ways that are obvious and immediate, but also in ways that are more subtle and more damaging in the long run. Serious issues on earth by the lane closure investigation, but yet to be pursued with anything like the energy directed to the event's political implications include that the professional management at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey lacks control over the activities of powerful staff members that such staff includes political appoint appointees with broad authority and little accountability and the powers of these appointees include the ability to waive public safety protocols. I doubt the integrity of anything the authority does including facility maintenance. I commend State Senator Loretta Weinberg, Democrat of Teaneck Assemblyman John Wisniewski, Democrat of Middlesex County, and U.S. Senator Jay Rockefeller, Democrat, West Virginia, for pursuing the issues raised by the lane closure event. I hope that they will carry their investigations through to port authority management issues that threaten the safety and pocketbooks of users. Huh. Well, it should be a very interesting investigation, to say the least. Very Regarding good. Governor Christie's reputation as a truth teller, mm -hmm. is there anyone naive or gullible enough to believe that Governor Christie was misled by his close staff, as he claimed. <coughs> when the recent discoveries regarding the involvement of people high up on his staff in the George Washington Bridge scandal came to light. Is there anyone in this state who has observed Christie in action, who could believe that anyone on his staff would dare to mislead him. It is con inconceivable that Christie's staff would ever do anything that would not meet with his approval, outright or tacit. Wink. Well, people that know him and that um, worked with him probably um, know his personality and then realize that if they did something uh, on their own, if they took it upon themselves to do something without his authorization, that they will be severely reprimanded and or uh, fired, terminated. And uh, so the likelihood that, what's her name, Bridget and Kelly? And Bridget and Kelly. Bridget and Kelly did this on her own, knowing full well what would happen Mm -hmm. uh, that she would be terminated by uh, somebody like Christy. It, it just... Bottles of mind. It, the pieces don't, don't fit. fit. That's correct. You know. On the George Washington Bridge scandal, the buck stops at Christy. Or at the very least, we should question his choice of associates who resort to such thuggish actions. What the hell does he want? He won re-election by a landslide. So what if the mayor of Fort Lee What did Richard Nixon want with Watergate? That he had to resign. I tell you, it's not the action, the crookedness, the corruption. It's the cover-up that gets you in the end. He was such a petty politician that he had to, you know, 
seek that sort of stuff. So he was being tricky. Sort of he was being tricky dick. Tricky dick. So with Governor Christie, same thing. Petty. That guy didn't support me, man. Let's do that, something. That's to him. petty. The guards. That's about ego. That's about that's about him. And it's not about the good of New Jersey. And that's what brings them down. And that's what Barbara Bono was trying to say during the uh, election, you know, about caring about, are you going to care about the rich and yourself, or are you going to care about the people of New Jersey? Yeah, right. Right. Who gives me my money for my campaign chest? The people of New Jersey! Oh, the rich bastards. The rich bastards. Thank you. Grease his palm. And that's what I'm going to take care chub of. big, fat, chubby palms. I squeeze that dollar bill, baby. Yeah, the um, and this is why we have to get the money out of politics. We New Jerseyans have known about our governor's tendency to name call, jerk, stupid, idiot, numb nuts. Well, yeah, if you if you if you debate with him, he calls you names. Yeah, or like the teacher who asked him why he sends his kids to private schools instead of public schools, he said, it's none of your business. Gee, that's a, that's a nice answer coming from a governor. Yeah. None of your business. None of your business where I, I send my kids to school. And to insult and bully those who dare to offer an opinion that he doesn't like. Yeah, like why show up at a, at a town hall meeting when Chris Christie is there, if if you know if if you have to agree with everything he says. We have heard people say that they were afraid to offer opposing opinions at public meetings for fear of being subject to his biting and sarcastic replies. You gotta be tough with a bully like him. You can't stand down. You can't fold like a cheap camera. You, ha you know, you have to s stand up to them tough, you know. You gotta, when, but you got to know what to say. I mean, you can't. The only time I, I, I call names is when a conservative has no proof to back up what they say whatsoever and they're talking nonsense. You know what I mean? But in an honest debate, if they're coming out, coming up with evidence or something meaningful then you shouldn't really resort to name calling but this guy this guy's like a, like a dictator as the bible says those who are deceived do not know they are deceived well then they're are they missing a few brain cells here and there could be in some instances or as i said they could have an ideology. They are fundamentalists. These things do not change. They are not subject I mean, to change. Like the people that are in church down south, and, they're, and, the, and the, the pastor has uh, poisonous rattlesnakes in his hand, mm -hmm. and he's taking up serpents, and he's dancing in the aisle. Mm -hmm. Look at me! The Bible says, take up serpents, and, and I'm get, taking it up, brother. And guess taking... what? The serpent bites him, and he's dead. What? No, what happened was he bit his wife, and she died. Well, whatever, that's what and I'm he, saying. But he's still dancing with, with rattlesnakes in church. Yeah, because he had faith. Faith that uh, he was protected by God. But guess what? Not all faith is the real faith. You know what God probably figures? You're, you're crazy enough and you're a uh, counterfeit, phony Christian enough to, to follow this cult. So I am not going to protect your ass from that rattlesnake. Well, you he, shouldn't be following the cult anyway, to begin with. Exactly. But uh, he's not uh, basically, a, uh, like I say so many times, he's not worried about those people in the first place. Only the elect. 144,000. 144,000. The, the point I'm getting to is, is yeah. the ideology, the unproven ideology that comes out of the mouths of all these conservatives. And, you know, they just... Uh, uh, See now, Chris Christie, he's he's eating that humble pie. Crow. He's eating crow. He's being crow he's pie. being like humble. He's he's being like Ralph Cramden when he goes humming humming. You know when he's nervous. 
because he knows he's in trouble. You know why? Because the first thing from a P, uh, public relations firm that these people usually hire when they get in trouble is be humble because the American people are very forgiving. But don't they tell you to act like that when you go to court? That too. You gotta dress up nice and uh, yes. you know, you gotta sh kind of schmooze the, schmooze the, the, the judge. Dr judge. Because we are, uh, as they say, as the Republicans say, truth is perception. Not the real what is. They Just say they truth perceive. is perception. I thought truth was truth. Yeah, but they don't know that truth. That's in well, politics, how many truths are there? Because in politics, it is all about perception. But perception, about perception is part of the imagination of an ind individual. It's his word against your word. That's correct. Why he ha he's rich and you're not, so his word is more important than your word, right? Uh, in this uh, society, yes. We haven't heard this this bastard all day. Very good, stupid. We're gonna hear it now. Okay. Yeah. So let me finish this thing here. Yes, finish that. When thing. so many Democratic mayors supported Christie in the recent election, I suspected that they might have wanted to assure that they remained in good graces. The bullying tone that has been set by the Christie administration is mm. pervasive, mm. and the message mm. from the behavior at the top is that it is the modus operandi. Right. And now, the chickens have come home to roost. The chickens have come home. Bagak! 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 That's what chickens like to do. They like to say bagak all the time. <laughs> one last one the here. The bagak chicken one. ranch. Yeah. I suggest we measure Governor Christie by the standards expressed in a letter from one of his supporters. Hey, Ron. Quote, it is important not to judge, unquote. Well, what if somebody is a complete asshole and, and a blithering idiot? They, 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 they bring judgment upon themselves. In criticizing columnist Mike Kelly, who is a local columnist for the record. Yeah, the, yeah, the record that doesn't like to touch the real deep subjects you hear on the uh, internet. You know, namby-pamby local newspapers. A letter writer wrote, I des a desired attribute for a good governor is to hire people who can make quality judgments. But many judgments have to get the authorization from the supervisor. You cannot take it upon yourself. That's why. To do everything. That's why we are stuck with the, the truth of the matter. Mr. Christie was involved. He was not misled. He was involved. And I'm sure that will come out. Eventually. Yes. It will. Senate Majority Harry Reid Democrats. Press Republicans to support a three month extension of emergency longer term unemployment benefits. Something Republicans say they could support only if Democrats find a way to pay for it. Um, uh, I, got, I, have a, budget? I have a way to pay for it cut the military budget waste and, oh! and tax the rich. Oh! You speak, you speak. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, blasphemy. Common sense. You speak blasphemy. I speak common sense. The Senate 
is due to vote today to advance a bill sponsored by Democrat Jack Reed of Rhode Island and Republican Dean Heller of Nevada. Though it is unclear whether the legislation has the vote to pass. In addition to Heller, Reed would need four more Republican votes for the bill to get the Senate to approve it. Never, with unemployment like this, have we even considered not extending it. Well, since the job market is not here anymore in the U.S., the people have to live on something. If they want them to live. Very good question, Dr. Bill. If they want them to live. Benefits for the long-term unemployed expired December the 28th. The program was intended to help jobless people after they exhausted the state benefits, typically lasting six months. State benefits are a drop in the bucket. Well, it's only two-thirds of your original pay. Big, what the hell? Big damn deal. Hey, hey, Chris Christie, I'm sure, is responsible for New Jersey welfare recipients getting no more than $140 a month. Insane, preposterous. And, and, and uh, what about the drop in the bucket food stamps, which got cut? You know? Well, yeah, like, because the Republicans are finding all these ways to cut this, that, the other thing. But they aren't cutting the taxes for the rich. They aren't cutting they are not cutting them, making them. So, like I said many times in the past, gee, if, if America ends up in the poorhouse, completely in the poorhouse, in the gutter, yeah. who on earth will buy the products of all these corporations? Who, where would the surplus cash come to, come from to buy their products? Well, I got news for you. This year, China bought more cars in the United States. Who's buying all where these do, cars? Where do they China? find the money? They don't get paid that much. Right. Where do they get the money? As far as I understood it, there's only like 30 to 40 million Chinese people who are living high and off. Yeah, that's all. What? Out, out of how much? Two billion? Uh, probably 1.2, something like that. Yeah, and, and India is not that far behind, right? However, yeah, well, uh, however, uh, yeah. orders for Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, Bentleys are up. Where? In the world. So well, he's getting rich. Well, look. The one percent, or even the top twenty percent, and the corporations, man, they they got record high profits, and they're not paying taxes. So there's plenty of money for those Bentleys and Rolls Royces and Lamborghinis and Ferraris. But for the poor and the middle class, they're on it. They can't even afford Chevrolet. Yeah, you're right about that. Even a Chevy is over 20 grand, right? Or a Fiat. Or well, a smart car. Well, Fiat, or a Tesla. Fiat, Kia, you know, the South Korean cars, uh, and, and Fiat, that's the low end, price-wise, right? Yeah, how is it possible? Our pharmaceuticals companies make pharmaceuticals, sell them cheaper in other countries. Right but yet, that. South uh, South uh, Korea, or whatever else, uh, exports cars to the United States, and they, we got to pay the, the world price for them. You're right. What uh, is going on? Pharmaceut the same pharmaceuticals sold across the border in, let's say, a Mexican pharmacy. The same. They use the same famous drug company patented drugs, okay, cost 
a tiny, tiny fraction of what they sell for in the United States. And the cars, when they get to the United States, mm -hmm. the imports, yeah. they go up in price also. It's almost like okay. the standard in American business is to price gouge and rob people. Well, my boy, it is the one of the flaws, or right-wingers would not call it a flaw, but I call it a flaw, in capitalism is the buy low, sell high. Yeah, the, Ill, the deregulated, ill-gotten gain. Yeah. yeah. The devil's economics. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to tell those idiot uh, right-wing trolls that are on the internet. The proof is in the pudding. You ever hear that old saying? The proof is in the pudding. And there is no proof to support anything that Republicans believe in. It just isn't. They, 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 they change the subject when I tell them that Reagan shifted the tax burden from the rich to the middle class and the poor. He's like, he's like a patron saint to them. He is, yes. Facts, facts, facts. Prove all things. Prove all things. Hey, 1986. Yeah. Him and Alan Greenspan. Yeah, put their Alzheimer heads together and came up with raising the social security tax. Now who pays that? Which shouldn't have been, shouldn't have existed. Who pays that? Who the rich pay? No. Today, they no longer pay any social security taxes after 100 $13,000, I believe, is the figure. The system's rigged. No. Raise taxes. And, 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 as, and as Republicans, like Christie, tell the people that, you know, we need to make sacrifices. We need to make sacrifices. Oh, yeah, we do. The, the uh, governors or whatever, congressmen, senators, they have these automatic pay raises and not counting uh, perks and freebies left and right. It's like they never make sacrifices. No. But it's all rigged to be that way. It's it's complete selfishness, it's com complete corruption. This is the flag waving patriotic mumbo jumbo you've been told your whole life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yankee doodle dandy flag waving mumbo jumbo. The people have been lied to their whole life. What is going on in Iraq today? Okay? Al-Qaeda, I believe it's just taken over two cities. Fallujah and another city. That's true. The United States, when we were in Iraq, had a big battle in Fallujah. A lot of people killed. All right, so where, where, where did all these extra Al-Qaeda's come from? When we left, we let them in. Oh. Well, we knew it at the time that it was go it was going to happen, but they didn't care. It was Iraq was a money making opportunity for the private sector. I hate that okay? word. I hate the word the private sector. Well, because I hate that's what it was I, all about. I can't stand CEOs. Yeah, but they made the big bucks there. Had nothing to do with fighting for freedom, fighting for my country. What freedom? The, 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 the U.S. borders were never threatened. What do you mean fighting for my country? Why do these people believe the, 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 these conservative lies? They're deceived, obviously. Except there are some military personnel who have come forth. Yes, there are. And testified that otherwise, that they're wise to what really happened. Yeah. But what can be done about it? You see, the power is... The power is in such cement. It's cemented into the culture. I'm trying to understand, and it's difficult. How come there are individuals like myself and you and people like uh, Ralph Nader or Jerry Brown or, or uh, uh, Bar uh, Bernie Sanders 
uh, um, uh, Ed Schultz and all the Rachel Maddow. There are people who are able to see reality in the world for what it really is and are able to see and embrace the truth. See through the fog. And seek it out. See through the fog. Yeah. The fog cutting minds. The, 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 mm -hmm. it, but there are others who are so blind but then again they're they're almost like they're under a spell. They're spellbound. They're spellbound because they are ideologues and fundamentalists. What makes a, a person spellbound to believe ideology and, and insanity you have to go compared to, to an intelligent person like us. You have to go to Wilhelm Reich to understand fixations and things, characterology. You know, liberalism and conservatism are characterology. They are in your character. They are in your muscles. Fixated muscles. in your muscles. I think the brains of uh, progressive liberals are most likely far superior than the. Uh, yes, but these than impulses come from inside the body. They are in your muscles. That's why Reich, when he had, when Reich has the body therapies, he would release these these uh, armors, as he called them. Is that is that like the comparing a person who decides? I am not going to have one more cigarette. I'm going to quit smoking. No drugs. I, I can control my booze. And they go on through life without smoking and just drinking a little bit socially here and there. And uh, no drugs at all. And they have this willpower to just do it. Good Cold friend. turkey. They can quit. And others, oh, it's an addiction. Nicotine. I can't help myself. Good for those people who can do that. Well, but, but what I'm saying is, is th there's something in these individuals. There's some strength yes. that they it have. Strength, yep. They're able to make a decision quickly and decisively and logically. Make it, boom. Take the bull by the horns and do it. You, you know, know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's like losing weight. 85, right. Eighty-five percent of people lose weight, gain it back. Right, no and matter people, what diet you're on, and, and and imbeciles like Honey Boo Boo's mother can't oh, can't do it. They can't they can't they can't they can't do it. So they have to go on a talk show, and cry and make expect everybody to a, to accept them Victim. as a different alter, alternative lifestyle. Ah. We are obese, so instead of obese, you have to call us uh, big and large beauty, women, uh, uh, voluptuous, a uh, big. Bold, beautiful blobs or something. Women. <laughs> they try to change things around. You know, like in the old days, you were a janitor. Now you're a, c a custodial engineer. Engineer, yes. <laughs> or sanitation engineer. Yeah, something like that. It's. <laughs> hey, I give you a title. There ain't getting no stinking raise. Often you get a title, but there's no, you're right. There's no money that goes with it. You know, sometimes the hour. A lot of people are satisfied with that too. You know, quite often the hourly paid full timer <laughs> makes more money than their supervisor does, who's on salary. I've I found that out, especially if it's a union job. You well, know? God bless union jobs. Yes. Yes. But according to our corporations, that's what's driving them overseas. High oh, wages sure. in this country because of the union. Oh, P heaven forbid people should want a living wage, expect a living wage. Well, of course. You We're know, making them peons, they should be proud of that. You know, a perfect example, the people that work for UPS, the poor souls that load and unload the trucks, they are abused horribly. Ooh. But they they put up with it because um, they're in the Teamsters Union and they get outstanding medical benefits and they mm -hmm. keep it for the medical. But they they go they're they're paid very little and and they get yelled at and, and, and put down all the time and insulted and screamed at, almost like they're in the Marine Corps basic training. And uh, they try to break you because you have that union job. Yeah. You have the Teamsters and, and uh, you know. You and, have another loyalty. 
Well, they want you to be loyal to only them. But if you were loyal to them, you would be a slave to them. Bingo! You wouldn't get good medical benefits. You wouldn't, Bingo! You wouldn't get the uh, good pension. Bingo! You wouldn't get guaranteed pay raises. But guess what we did in this country about unions? What? We thought they were communists. We thought we sued them for restraint of trade under the uh, uh, antitrust laws oh, yeah? instead of the big corporations, which the laws were meant to restrain. Uh, lest I forget, we also beat them, hurt them, and killed them with private security guards when they struck and the National Guard. Both. Both. That's what we did in that country. Oh, you mean like the, the gold mine, uh, the gold, the yes, coal mine incident. Yes. Yes. And the governor of the state where it happened is the one who called out National the National Guard. Guard? Correct. Well, he must have been in bed with the company. Of course. That's my point. My point entirely is that officialdom is always in cahoots with the corporation. It's a marriage. It's called fascism. Uh, yeah, you hear that uh, numbskull on the on the progressive discussions Facebook group who kind of put communism and socialism and fascism all in. He lumped it all together. And and and, and yeah, to, to to make believe that it's totalitarianism. Yeah, he took, that's the, the the definition he needed. He, he took all the uh, demonized, so-called demonized words, and he lumped them all together and threw Barack Obama in the pile. Yeah, I I said to him, fascism is not socialism. Well, or communism. You know, I had my problems with Barack Obama with the. Uh, the NADA and uh, some other stuff and everything like that. But you got to know, sir. hey, the Congress voted on that too. Just like they voted on the Patriot Act, yeah. etc. Right. So you don't go blaming Barack Obama for being a dictator when your own congressmen and senators have voted not your interest. That's the USA that's Patriot that's Act that's and, 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 and the NADA, National Authorization Defense uh, whatever. You know? Uh, all I have to say to the teabaggers is, what good did capitalism ever ever do to the poor? What good did, did it ever do for the poor? None. It never was meant to. It was a system that came about when certain people had certain money. Right. So then they were able to buy products low and sell them hard. So George Carlin was right. In order to experience the American dream, you have to be asleep. Because the, that's the only way the average person and the poor can experience the American dream. Exactly. You, know, you got to be rich to experience the American dream. And this whole concept of uh, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps it's is a nightmare. total crap. It's a nightmare. Only 10% in the history of the United States ever pulled themselves up by the bootstraps self-made like, well no one is self-made like no one no no everybody got breaks let's say you you uh, start a company today and let's say I You're, don't have a silver spoon in my mouth yes you started I don't care how you started you From started the bottom. a country All right. a country a company you started a company yeah you have three trucks right you do some kind of delivery yeah you okay. got to drive on roads. Yes. Who put the roads there? Government. You didn't do it. Private sector. So how can you be self-made? Private sector didn't do it, right? Right. So how can you be self-made? You always owe something to someone. What if I have to make uh, night deliveries? Who put the lamps on the, on the roads? As Al Franken said. Signs. Yeah. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Yes. Simple as that. But the Republicans are so arrogant that they did everything themselves. They owe nothing to you know, no one. What would they what would they do if if government okay got shrunk down to nothing like they wanted? And all of a sudden 
the services that they take for granted no longer existed. Yeah, but we would be hurt that way first, not them. Because the rich are the last to get hurt when it comes to that. That's correct. Because they have their own electric generators and they have their own this, that, and, and they the other can thing. fly to Belize or wherever and set up shop. You know what I mean? Or Dubai. Yeah. Or, or Monaco or wherever. Whatever. It is. French Riviera, whatever they have their retreat. Exactly. Not timeshare, but retreats that they own. They own it. And their offshore bank accounts and Swiss oh. bank accounts and uh, and mailboxes and, and the money the corporations keep over there and don't bring back here so they don't have to pay taxes on it. The Cayman Islands, yeah. isn't there some kind of uh, elite, mailboxes? Elite That's all it is. Of uh, mailboxes. Mailboxes. So and they call them subsidiaries, and the money goes to them instead of bringing it here to the United States to be taxed. And guess what? They get away with that shit. That, that they do, yeah. Yeah. And who is the Cayman Island to say no? It's a poor little Caribbean country. They, they should thank their lucky stars. Well, they probably do thank their lucky thank stars. Their lucky stars, they do get some moolah. That they, they got something going on there. Yeah. All the elitists like to keep their mailbox there. Exactly. You know, I don't blame for the Caymans for, for saying yes to it. You know? Well, I blame the United States for having laws that allow them to do that. Because the people that run the United States are in bed with these rich individuals. Fascism! The marriage of uh, a corporation and the government is fascism. Correct. So, Mr. Nincompoop teabagger that says totalitarianism and socialism and communism and fascism and everything is just lumped into one. They know, they're talking out of their ass. They should have got censored number or whatever it was where I explained it all to them. Hey, if you go to the um, radio station. There you go, see? Uh, which there. is at the top of newslettercensored.com. Bingo. Which you'll learn more about at very soon when this show ends, which is any minute. You go to the top link that's the radio station on the top of the radio station you there is a free printable issue past issue of newsletter censored print click on each page print it out and you have your you get the staple gun put it together and you have a free sample issue yeah read it and it's it's called free market capitalism is dead a past issue, one of the classics, like other great classics like uh, Economics 101 <gasps> and other ones that are that are gems. And you will see, you will read, and you will learn that there's a lot that most people are do not know. They're just unaware of, you know. And uh, well, it's not just an ordinary newsletter. It's for enlightenment. It's it. There, there's, it's for open minds. There's education in the newsletter. There's there's warnings in the newsletter. There's enlightenment in there. It's uh, it, it it's and it even goes as far as telling you why why does human nature do these things? Mm. It goes deep, and it's original. And, and, know, and the scriptural tie-ins tie to the Christian Bible. With the five taboos of American life. Religion, yeah. sex, health, health child rearing. Child rearing. Um, Did I say sex? Yeah. Child rearing. Uh, politics. Politics, religion, <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and, and other little current news topics thrown in there. Well, of course. Here and there. Stupidities we of the Republican we, Party. We call it the, we call it our tidbits. Tidbits, yes. It's all in there, and uh, you know, uh, and then you can also go online, uh, go to Google uh, or or YouTube, and you can click on uh, Mega Life Twenty One, and you can listen, listen to, to past readings. Not just the radio station. You could uh, you can listen to them on demand in the archives. I'll give yes. you I give you a perfect example of an outstanding playlist. The God Project. 
Of course. Very, va very valuable. Of course. You're not going to hear about the things you'll hear in the God Project from your traditional fundamentalist Christians, etc., etc. You're not going to hear it. You won't hear it from Joel Osteen or but Pat, you'll hear it Pat in, Robertson or. But it's in the Bible. And these people, they thump it. They, 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 they revere it. Yeah, well, they say they follow it. They're prosperity preachers. They just talk about getting rich. Yes, but they say it is what God wants for you. In other words, they lie in the name of God. Yeah, so they say God's abundance, His abundance that He promises for you is, in their opinion, lots of money. And if you don't have it, it's your own fault. That's the yeah, problem. They blame you for it. That's right. But everything's surrounded around their prosperity is monetary. Well, of course, if you want me to keep speaking this uh, <coughs> prosperity religion stuff, you have to donate. Now, did you ever hear, you people that like to watch Joel Osteen and these people on TV, uh, Pat Robertson, uh, do, you, do, you, do you ever hear of these um, evangelists um, giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to a worthy charity, like let's say feeding starving children in Africa, or uh, or going to the Philippines and saving all those people that lost their homes to uh, the typhoon, things like that. Did you ever hear Joel Osteen getting well, the mods out of his uh, wallet, well, his know, bank account? I don't know about Joel Osteen, but Pat Robertson, if they they I, have a they have a. Uh, they have a mission that does that, but it's also tied to his, uh, I believe it's diamond mines in Africa, and I believe that maybe, maybe 10% gets to the people really? who need something. Didn't, uh, oh, yeah. didn't Jesus tell the rich man to sell all of your possessions all of it. and give it to the poor? And if you have two coats, give them two coats. And then follow me. He didn't say uh, uh, liquidate only 10% of your fortune and he give it to the He didn't say give a quarter to that bum on the street. No. No. Not a quarter. Now, Rush Limbaugh wouldn't even give a quarter to that bum on the street because he knows that that bum's going to buy wine. What the hell does Rush Limbaugh care about where the donation goes? In that sense. Well, he's saying that all poor people are a bunch of bums, is what he's saying. Exactly. And but what, is, what, was, what, 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 what he's doing is he's justifying the fact that he don't want to get that stinking corner. Yeah, he's using That's that why. as an excuse not yeah. to give it. Yeah. And spend it on his big long cigars. There you go. All right. Thank you for joining us for Progressive Discussions. Uh, this is... Um, long overdue you know we haven't been with you for two weeks and uh, it's officially the first well it's the first progressive discussions of the new year, the new year of January not part of the holidays yeah, yeah, yeah. New Year's but you know after everything is calms down and all the commercialism of the pagan holidays are over you know uh, this is it but anyway I hope you like our new format. We are going to take you, uh, after we sign off, we're going to take you directly to our promo. So watch that, listen to that, and I hope you enjoyed my meeting with William H. Moore the third. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Be safe. So long. All right. Bye. This has been a Megalife 21 production. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would uh, 
That would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored. That's all you need. Read it and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet.